All right, let's tie a jujube midge. This is one of my very first commercial flies, and uh, it's named after my daughter. Her name is not jujube. Her name is Julie. So here's the jujube. It's going to be tied on a TMCO 2488. Um, I don't like the H for this fly, although you can tie it on there. I like to keep this fly really skinny, and the 88H is a little bit stouter wire, so it is a heavier hook. Uh, but because of that, it makes the fly a little flat, fatter, and I just uh, I try to keep it skinny. So the thread I'm going to use, this is TMCO 16 aught white, and uh, again, closest stuff you can use to this um, is probably the Vivas 14 aught. And I'm going to take and I'm going to start this thread just about an eye length behind the hook eye, get rid of my tag end, and we'll tie. Let's see here, we'll tie a chartreuse in black. So I'm going to take two strands of chartreuse super hair. And you can see this is sort of fiber optic nylon fibers. It's uh, very similar to tippet material. It's very small. Now keep in mind you're seeing it on the camera there, blown up gigantic, so it's, it looks very big, but it's a very small thin fiber. Um, in this case, I'm going to get two strands of the chartreuse and one strand of black. And hold these up here where you can see them. So you see those three strands. They've got some kink and wave to them. Um, what I typically do, and this doesn't really make any difference on the finished fly, but I'll run my fingers down. And you can see I kind of pull and, and uh, slide my fingers down. Like I was straightening a leader, that will take some of that kink out, make this material a little easier to work with. Now I've cut all three ends to the same length, and you notice I don't have a thread base on the hook, and that's in an, in an effort to keep the fly skinny. I'm going to catch these three strands on my near side and pull them down just to the thread start. And then I'm going to wrap back over. I'm keeping my thread as flat and smooth as I can, about halfway down the bend of the hook. When I get there, I'm going to come forward again. And again, I'm trying to keep that thread as flat and smooth as I can. You can see that 10 knot thread, or 16 knot thread, has flattened out nicely there. All the way back up to where I started. Now we're, get, we're going to begin to wrap the body, <clears throat> and the trick on this, I get asked this question all the time, is how do you keep these three lined up? Um, there's a couple of little tricks. Um, the first of which is I'm going to come around the hook bend here, and I'm going to come straight back again. So I came around the hook point, and I came straight back. Now, as I lift these up, I see that they've lined up uh, chartreuse, black chartreuse, the black one's in the middle. doesn't make any difference what order they line up in. But what I do want to keep in mind is I want to keep them that way as I go the whole rest of the way up the hook. So I'm going to take this first turn. I'm going to drop this on the far side of the hook. And you can see I come right down against the, the point of the hook there. I've got to come around the hook point and back again. That's one of the biggest tricks to this. Um, if you don't come back again, if you kind of keep out at this angle and come up, you're going to have a space as you come around with that next turn. You can see the space in the body. Um, in this case, if I come back again, I can butt that turn right up to the previous turn. So I'll come around the hook point, back again. And if you kind of rock those, you can see if they get stacked up, it actually looks like on that first turn, I've got one stacked up. So let's just do that right. Come up on this first turn, around the hook, back again. And you can see as I start to wrap these, as I rock these, they'll lay flat on the hook. And by rocking, I'm just sort of jiggling them back and forth. And I'm going to work right up to where I started the thread. And you can see how that super hair picks up a lot of light, and that black strand creates the rib. So we've got a really nicely segmented body there. So now I'll trim my super hair out. And I'll come in and whip finish my white thread. Now, typically when I tie a bunch of these, I'll do all these abdomens at once and then come back and do the thoraxes separately. Um, in the case of this one, I'll show you everything all in, all in a row. So now I'm going to switch to some Uni ADOT Black. This is going to be for the thorax. And I'm going to start this right over my tie-off and overlap onto the front edge of the abdomen, abdomen a bit. Then I can trim that tag out. Now on a size, I'm tying a size 18 here. Size 18 jujube, I want about a dozen strands, maybe even just 10, of white floral fiber. And you can see this is a shiny, very fine filament. And I encourage you to count them um, just for the reason, you may, maybe you don't have to count them every time, um, but just for the reason that once you count them a couple of times, you know what 12 looks like. And I just happened to pull 13 out there, so 
Um, I do want to try to keep an even number. Um, 12 is not very many. It's very easy to overdo this, and that's one of the most common, common mistakes I see on this fly is using too many strands of floral fiber. So I've cut all three of those, or all of those strands, all 12 of those strands, even, and I'm going to catch them with the turn of thread there on top. Catch them with the turn of thread, and then draw them down to length. And I just want to pull those butt ends behind the hook eye. And at this point, I'm going to start to build my thorax. And my thorax is going to be sort of an egg shape. I'm just wrapping the thread here. Fairly tight. And you'll notice that I've left about an eye length worth of bare space right here behind the hook eye. Um, that's going to be for our tie off and our thread head here at the front. So once I've got the thorax built, I can bring the thread up into that space. Now I'm going to pull my floral fiber over the top and I'm going to bring my thread over the top and drape it over the floral fiber. Now I can pull straight down on the thread and get a couple turns on there and that'll make sure that my wing case is centered across the top of the fly. Now I'm going to take these remaining stubs and I know I've got 12 because I counted them and I'm going to put six on each side and you can see if I sort of roll these in my fingers they sort of coil into their own little individual strands. Now I'm going to take the near side back and these are going to become the wing buds. So on the near side, as I wrap over these, I want to hold these just a little bit under the hook as my thread torque will come around and pull them up in line with the hook shank. So they're right in line along the side. Now on the far side, I'm going to hold these just a bit high for the same reason. That thread torque on that side of the hook is going to push down to square those up. And you can see how that rolled those right into place along the side of the hook. Just a few turns of thread to smooth that head off. And then I can come in and whip finish right over the top. Now the thread head on this fly is part of the bug, so it's a little oversized on purpose. A midge doesn't end at its thorax. It's got a little head in front of it, so I make that head a prominent part of the fly. And now when I go to trim the legs, I'm going to take my very thinnest scissors and put them right against the back edge of the wing case. And I'm going to grab these two, I said legs, these are actually wing buds. I'm going to grab these two wing buds and butt those scissors up perpendicular to the hook and trim them off. So they're just a bit longer than the wing case. And that is our finished Jujube Midge. No uh, overlaps or twists in the body. We've got a nicely segmented body. I tie this in lots of different colors. Olive, black, uh, black and white, olive and black, chartreuse and black, red and white, brown and white. Boy, the color list just goes on and on as I think about it. Any uh, combination. Uh, the way to think about it is your primary color is always going to be two strands and your rib color is going to be a single strand. Um, you can do a flash version. Uh, maybe I'll do a little video version of the flash version as well. Mix it up a little bit, but this is definitely a fly you want in your box. Any tailwater, um, anywhere really in the world, um, any place that's got midges, which is every place in the world, uh, this fly will work. It's a great little uh, winter, spring, fall type of pattern. Uh, certainly on those tailwaters during the summer months, it's, it's money in the bank. Um, tie some up, see what you think. Take care. See ya.